Greetings, Paper Demons! Today is part two of the goal setting video series where I'm going to cover additional tips to help you achieve your artistic goals. If you missed my last video on OKRs, go ahead and check that out now. I'll wait! Welcome back! Let's get into it. Real quick, I do want to share a few updates from our community. The response from our community from the last video was actually pretty great. And I just wanted to share a few goals that members of our community are working on this quarter. Sabina is working on making more original paintings and doing more watercolor tutorials. Melanie is working toward becoming a freelance artist. Arkelian is working on drawing more as well as practicing watercolor. Hushicho is trying to get their comic launched. Virial is working on getting back into art at all. Man, that's a tough one. Artist block, I've been there. I'll have to do another video specifically on that topic. I think that's a pretty common thing we all run into. And Yuri is working on her art portfolio. Let's be sure to give them lots of encouragement so that they can achieve their goals. So the first topic I wanted to talk about is which goals to actually choose. So I talked about breaking things down in the last video, but I think I probably could have uh, given a few more tips about which types of goals to choose. In particular, I think it's actually a good idea to start with small goals. And the reason it's good to start with small goals is to build up momentum. If you start with something small, you're more likely to succeed and then have success after success. You know, if you can, try to start with something small and then next quarter you can do something more ambitious. Another suggestion with choosing goals is to just start with one. I talked about doing three for the quarter, but it's actually probably a good idea to just start with one. You can always pick more in the following quarter. Suggestion two I have for you to help you be more likely to achieve your goals is to set aside time. Make time specifically during the week that you will work toward your goals. For example, for the last two years, I've been working towards building my business and almost every morning I have a time slot that I, I get up early and I spend dedicated time working toward achieving my goals. On days when I have more dedicated time, I try to spend the first four hours on achieving my goals before I get to the other urgent stuff that comes up. Then I think perhaps the biggest challenge that comes with achieving our goals is remembering them at all. Those of us with ADHD especially have trouble remembering things. We make grand plans to do things and we have all the enthusiasm in the world to do it and then we just kind of forget or peter out or get distracted by other things. Ooh, shiny. So what are some ways that we can keep our goals top of mind so that we don't forget? One way you can keep your goals top of mind is to make it fun. Invest some time in decorating your goals page. Put some stickers, maybe some washi tape, draw little pictures, whatever you can do to make it fun. You are an artist after all. I actually have a pretty big sticker collection. I, I guess you could call me a sticker hoarder. I especially like these cute little ones, really cute little animals. You can even use stickers as a check mark to mark that you completed one of your tasks. Another way to help you remember your goals and to keep them top of mind is to make it part of your daily routine. For example, tape up your OKRs onto your bathroom mirror so you can see it while you're brushing your hair or brushing your teeth or getting ready for the morning. The third way to keep your goals top of mind is to have a weekly review. What this means is you have some sort of time set aside every week to do two things. One, you're going to pick three tasks related to your goals that help you move you forward. These are small little baby steps that help you move you toward your goals. Pick those three things out and plan to do those during the week. Also, take some time to review how you did the last week. Did you achieve the three goals? What can you do to do, do this better? Another thing you could try is using the best self journal. Now this is not a paid endorsement. I've just tried this journal out before and I thought it was pretty neat. And it built into the best self journal is a system of OKRs. You plan out your OKRs for the quarter and each week you set three tasks that you want to achieve for that week. In addition, you're doing that weekly assessment to basically grade how well you did the previous week and how you can do better next time. If you're interested in learning more about the Best Self Journal, there's a link in the description below. I'm happy to do a more thorough review of it if you're interested. Just let me know in the comments. Another journal that can help you with planning your goal tasks for the week is one called the Panda Journal. There's also a link to that in the description below. The fourth and final suggestion I have for you with achieving your artistic goals is to manage your expectations. 
don't expect to have 100% of your tasks done at the end of the quarter. It's not realistic. What matters is that you make progress. In fact, with the OKR model, it's expected to get about 70% done. If you get more than 70% done, it means your goals may not have been ambitious enough. If you got less than 70% done, it may mean that they were too ambitious. As long as you have a healthy mindset about it and don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, in part, I'm actually telling this to myself because I have been really hard on myself for not achieving my goals. And that's something that I'm actively working on. By the time this video comes out, it's halfway through the first quarter of 2019. How are you doing with your goals so far? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like more art and mental health tips, or you'd like to participate in artistic challenges, join my newsletter. A link is in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. At the $5 tier, you'll get access to the behind the scenes vlog. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and catch you around next time. Bye!